The truth isn't just irrelevant, it's the enemy of his regime. The tr it's the actual categorical enemy. The uh, one website still up in Moscow yesterday morning reporting roughly accurate figures on casualties and deaths has been closed down already. The Russian people are watching television programs describing the success of Vladimir Putin's, quote, special military operation. The idea that objective reality somehow unites us all. And until quite recently, I'd have thought that there was some sort of bedrock of consensus. You'd think, you know, out there, that's bonkers. That, that, but everyone knows that's true. Everyone knows that's not true. It's just gone. It's been deliberately dismantled over the last seven or eight years. And Vladimir Putin's Kremlin has been in the pilot seat for that dismantling. I, I mean, you name it, where the objective, where the dismantling of objective reality. Trump called it fake news when he dis and alternative facts. Do you remember that? We just you construct your own false version of reality and turn everything into a a debate. You know, well, you shouldn't be, you shouldn't. Oh, if you don't want to hear other views, I don't want to hear other views. If that view is that the moon is made of cheese and the earth is flat, or that climate science isn't real that the European Union is an enemy of its members' interests. These are not debates that Vladimir Putin is just defending his borders against NATO aggression. These aren't debates or two sides or opinions. These are blatant, barefaced lies. And they have wound their way so far into the consciousness of the West that he thought he'd be able to do this and somehow get away with it. And I don't know why it's failed so far. I, I, God forbid we engage in premature optimism or any form of Pollyannaism. Um, the move to remind us all of his nuclear capabilities at the weekend did two things. It showed us that things are going a hell of a lot worse than he expected, but also that they could get a hell of a lot worse for all of us than they currently are. But he thought, he believed that he had... Um, he had so successfully hollowed out Western democracy by, number one, putting a man in the White House, who you'll remember, persuaded his own party to vote against giving aid to Ukraine, unless Ukraine lied about Joe Biden's son, <laughs> unless Ukraine, the Ukrainian president, actually lied uh, in order to help Donald Trump's re-election campaign. That, that's, he's got that on one country. That's the most powerful country on the planet. He's got them eating out of his hand like Rula Lenska uh, drinking, no, it's the other way around, like George Galloway licking milk out of Rula Lenska's on that dismal episode of Celebrity Big Brother. And then he thought that he'd hollowed out Europe as well. He thought that with Brexit, remember when people like Farage were telling you about the domino effect and it was all going to come tumbling down? Oh, and don't listen to all that stuff about Russia and Cambridge Analytica. And who am I? I certainly didn't vote for anything because of my Facebook page telling me that I was going to be richer and we'd get rid of all the foreigners. He thought he'd, he thought he'd weakened the West so completely that he'd be able to waltz over the border into Ukraine and have it all sorted within three or four days. So what went wrong? With the constant caveat that it's not over yet and it's almost certainly going to get a hell of a lot worse before it gets any better. But a massive miscalculation from a man who arguably has not previously put a foot wrong on the world stage or who has certainly had almost all of his malevolent dreams come true. I'll take any answer you've got on that with, with again, the um, uh, obvious observation that no one's going to be infallible on this. No one's going to be completely right. What, what, what's he got? What, why on this? You know, as recently as last year, the British Foreign Secretary was taking 25 grand from a fellow that had been imprisoned for money laundering. He must be sitting there in the Kremlin laughing, looking at, oh, over there. Someone owns a newspaper. Someone owns a British newspaper. Oh, over there. Someone's in the House of Lords. Oh, over there. They own Chelsea Football Club. Oh, well, over there. I mean, just incredible. And that's not even touching upon what it's like to have a, 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 a kind of fanboy in the White House. Donald Trump this weekend attacking Western leaders and praising Vladimir Putin. Could you imagine that at any other point in shared Western history? Could you imagine Woodrow Wilson coming out and slagging off FDR and praising Adolf Hitler? It's quite incredible. Adolf Hitler is a genius. Our problem is that, that, that Roosevelt and Churchill are dumb. That's what Trump's doing.
So Putin thought he'd done enough. He thought he'd he thought he'd unleveled the playing field so completely that he'd just roll into Ukraine and have it under the jackboot by tea time. I don't know what's gone wrong. I haven't got a clue what's gone wrong, actually. But I'd love to know what you think the answer to that question is.